Good morning. I'm working out in my shop today and I'm gonna be swapping this Dana 70 axle into my truck Dig Dug. This is gonna be a huge upgrade in strength and ride quality because there's a bunch of suspension changes coming along with that. We're not just gonna be installing the ordinary rock crawler four link suspension. We're gonna be adding some go fast parts into this truck. That's probably the last time I'll get a drive Dig Dug for several months. But when it's running again, it will not be the same. This truck has a Chevy 12 bolt axle. That's what came in a lot of half ton trucks from this time period. And they were a good axle. They were good for about 35 inch tires. Anything smaller than that, they were just fine. But we're going up to the Mickey Thompson 40s and there's no way this will handle those. I'm also running leaf springs right now in this truck and those have got to go. The leaves are short, they're pretty stiff. So we're switching over to a four link trailing arm suspension. So I've got out all the pieces here from Barnes four wheel drive to build this four link suspension. All these pieces are the brackets. Over here, I've got the links. I've got a couple of brackets sitting up here that I'm mocking up. These will go on the truss. These are the triangulated uppers. And then down here, I've got brackets for the lower part. So I'm mocking everything up here on the bench and kind of procrastinating taking this axle down because I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet. I can't get my hoist back in here because the truck's blocking it and it's really heavy. I don't know, I'll figure that out and get back to that. Right now I've got a whole bunch of stuff to take off on the truck. These old boards are actually white oak. I need to find a cool project that I can make out of them. I bought the wood from a guy in Ashton, Idaho. We'll make a bench or something. For now they're coming out. I'm gonna put this truck up in the air now so I can start taking off everything on the bottom side. All right, the first thing coming out is the exhaust. I got him out. I had a Series 10 Flowmaster muffler up front that two ran into and two ran out of. And then I had two Series 50 Flowmaster mufflers on there and I love the sound of it. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to fit all that back in after I do the four link, but we'll figure something out. These Bilstein shocks are coming off and Bilstein shocks will go back on. I'm going for this drive shaft next. Now I gotta get the other end over here. Okay, other side. Okay, there it is. All right, that drive shaft I probably won't be able to reuse because it's got a single carton joint on both ends. And I need a double carton on one end because the way that the four link moves up and down, it's always pointing the differential right at the back of the transfer case. And that's not the case with the leaf springs. So I could shorten that one up and change it or I could just get a new one. I needed to lift this heavy axle down off of this table and look who shows up. <laughs> We're gonna do this in a couple of stages. Yeah, it's a beast. It got heavier when I put the discs like, on. Legit, that was like all of my curling strength. <laughs> We did it. Now I really want to mount some tires and I want to get it up in the air and get the, the Mickey Thompsons out there on the ends. I'll just jack it up and then put the tires on both sides and then I can roll it around. That's next. <laughs> that was great timing for Peyton to stop by. We got the axle down off the table. Now I got to get some tires and wheels on it so I can roll it around. So I'm gonna head out to the tire and wheel garden and go try to find something that will work with this. So I got a couple of choices out here. This is a set of wheels I have off of an old Ram. I don't know, not that old, maybe like 2011. I could use these, 
Oh, let me show you what else I got. These here are kind of cool, but they're five lugs, so they don't work. And they have good tires on them, so I don't really want to break them up. I got these for my brother like a year ago, and they kind of remind me of slotted mags. I guess they're kind of more like wide spokes, but I'm a huge fan of slotted mags. So I think I'm going to go with these. I'm going to have to take off the tires on these. All right, I got my tires in here, and the first thing I got to do is figure out how to break the bead on these. I'm gonna let all the air out, and then we'll try and use the jack, see if that'll work. This is my tire changer. I built this a while back. It's kind of a workout, but it's changed a lot of tires. I made it out of a receiver hitch, and I drew up some plasma cutout parts, and this duckbill thing I bought off of Amazon. It works pretty good. These 40-inch Mickey Thompsons will be the biggest tires I've ever installed with this. We'll find out if it can do it. All right, let's see if we can wrestle this tire off. That tire came off really good. Now it's time to see if the 40 inch tires will go back on. The wheel looks like it's in pretty good shape. There's a weird big scuff right here. Everything else looks fine. Don't know what that's from. I've been using canola oil to get these tires on and off because that's what I have. Like I said, this is a lot of work. That's one tire done. There's tire number two. Air them up, and this is my favorite part right here. Here it goes. Ah, that was one of them. Here's the other one. Ah, there we go. These tires are seated. 20 PSI, not bad. Those look so cool with the wheels on them, and they're huge. And I just realized that these are old Dodge or Ram wheels, and they're going on a Dodge axle right now. So these wheels are actually going home. All right, let's see if I can get this axle jacked up and get those things on there. For a second there, I thought those weren't gonna go on. I thought they were gonna rub the caliper, but now that they've got them lined up, looks like they're gonna work. Now I'm excited again. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, now I gotta go get the other side and then I can roll this around the shop. Look at that. Check this out. 
Let's go look at the other side. It looks exactly the same. So good. I'm excited to get this under the truck now because that's where things get real. I get to see how it's gonna fit in there and we'll have to start chopping stuff out and we can start running the links. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm ready now to take out this axle, but before I do that, I wanna get some measurements of the ride height. I really like how the truck sits right now. And I know when I put on bigger tires and I change the suspension, that it's gonna go up a little bit, but I don't want it to go up too much. So I gotta get these measurements first. That reminds me of one of my favorite jokes. Have you heard about the one-armed fisherman? He caught a fish this long. If you don't know where you started from, then knowing your ending point doesn't tell you how far you've come. Did I really need to explain that? I'll get this truck down and measure how high it's sitting. Check out this super cool tape measure somebody sent me. It's imperial and metric, eight meters. We'll use this one. 49 and three quarters, 49 and one quarter. I think my whole garage is downhill a little bit towards the door. As I was finishing up my measurements there, Carter stopped in and he's an interior guy. Like he does incredible job. Like, sewing and recovering and did you do the more of air and the banana i did both yeah so i've got these old panels here the old uh door panels i'm gonna trade him recovering these panels for some tuning work that he needs done on a corvair it's running a mega square system yep all right so i'm gonna take a look at that for him he's gonna help me get these covered up and this cab will be looking good. I got all the measurements I need. I'm gonna get this thing back up in the air so I can remove all of the brake lines and everything that connects this axle to this truck. So it, it's a good idea to get a little bit off the ground and then shake it and make sure it's stable. Peyton's helping me get this axle taken out of here. We cut all the brake lines and the air locker line and all that stuff. We're draining that and now we're gonna unbolt this thing and see if we can drop it off of the back. Yeah, I think one bolt here, one bolt on the front and we should be able to pick up the truck and the axle will stay on the ground. Jeez, I don't wanna break it. I'm in the impact wrench. Everything's disconnected down here. I think we're ready to lower this to the ground and get this axle out of here. Somehow I need to pick this up in a way that's not on the springs so that when I undo the springs, this axle will just drop out of here and roll back. So I'm gonna shift this right over here. I'm just gonna lift it barely off the ground so it doesn't have very far to fall when it comes loose. We're gonna have to put something on the other side. Oh, that's it. it. Moved up in there. Oh, I can't get there from here. Mm. All right. Aha! I came all the way. Between the lift and the frame, there's a half inch, and I've got three of the bolts undone. It's kind of just sitting on the springs, but not connected to them. All right. No, it's just hanging there. So I'm gonna go up with the lift and the axle should just stay here on the ground. There we go. I'm gonna pry those loose. It's free, let's see if it'll just roll back. There it goes. I need to go up higher. It's hitting my bumper. I gotta figure out a place to put this. It's gonna be in the way of this axle and everything else going on here. So let me find a place to put that and then we'll try and get the other one under here and see what those tires are gonna look like under this truck. All right, that's good for now, but somehow I need to get this axle out to the graveyard, to the garden. 
That's where we store axles here. We've got this thing up in the air now and pretty stable, so we can finally test what this is gonna look like with this axle and these tires under the truck. <laughs> For sure. All right, let's go check it out from the side. I'm gonna have to bump it to the left. Look at that, I'm gonna set it back down. You can see how small this arch is gonna be. It has to get totally redone. Yeah, I can't go much lower than that. These are so big. Yeah, this is gonna have to get opened up a little bit. And these tires, we're gonna have to get some wheels with different offset. These are tucked in a little bit too far. They'll stick out about another inch or two. That is looking good. I think I'm gonna move this axle back an inch or two, so when I cut this out, it'll have to get cut out further back on the back side. Awesome. All right, Peyton's gotta take off. I'm super appreciative of the help, man. Thank you for coming over. See you guys. The axle is unbolted and it's out of here now, but I've still got all of these brackets attached to the frame. So I wanna remove all of that stuff and get it out of here so I have a clean starting point for the new four link suspension. Some of these big brackets are riveted onto the frame and I'm gonna use the plasma cutter now to chop them off and then I'll come back with the torch and use it to cut out the rivets. This old shackle flip bracket is something I made a long time ago. It's kind of sad to take it off. I built it with a stick welder. I've got all the brackets chopped out of here. There's still a bunch of cleanup work to do, but I'm gonna stop for a few minutes because I'm running over to Kevin Stern's house. He lives a few miles away. The guy's awesome, and he has some really cool projects that are gonna provide a lot of inspiration for this build right here. So I'll take you along with me and show you what he's working on. I'm heading over to Kevin Stern's, and this guy is pretty awesome. He raised King of the Hammers last year in the 4400 class. That's like the highest level. He got like ninth place. I think he should have been higher but he missed a checkpoint or something by a few feet. I want to go over there. Uh, I'm picking up some stuff that uh, Stephen Watson from Off-Road Design dropped off for me. And I want to check out his cars. He's got this Ultra 4 car that's incredible. And the suspensions on those things are awesome. The technology in that is what I want to take a little bit of and stick into Dig Dug, some of the go fast stuff. So we'll check out his cars and pick up the parts and then head back to the shop. All right, I stopped by Kevin's and this is the vehicle that's in his shop right now. And this actually isn't the vehicle that he ran at King of the Hammers. This is a new vehicle that Steven Watson is running. So surprise, Steven was here too. Wherever there's a whole bunch of square body Chevys, you're probably gonna find Steven. I'm here with Steven Watson, who is like an off-road legend and the owner of Off-Road Design. And this is a car that he's building for King of the Hammers to do some pre-running next year. Yeah, so plan is uh, pre-run as part of Kevin Stern's effort for King of the Hammers this year, and then look at actually racing it in, uh, I guess it'd be 26. It, it's hard to have a race car and not race it. So the original plan is just build a pre-runner and have a fun car. And now that I got an actual race car. You've got to do I, it. I'm, yeah, there's, there's no not racing it. So this is Von Getten's last car. Okay. So the last thing this thing did was win the uh, the Silver State 300 in April. It's gonna be hard to live up to the car, is what it comes down to. It's a close match to Kevin's car. Um, they're they're very similar, they're both Triton cars. Okay. Um, same drivetrain layout, front engine system, portals, 
Um, he's actually converting his to portals right now. I gotta get this thing done and out of here so we can roll his car in here and put it all back together. I mean, there's all these little details that can get incorporated into just prepping every day, into prepping yeah. your truck. Yeah, that's why I love and, taking a look at oh. things like this because it just gives you ideas. Yeah. These guys are working on this thing right now, getting it ready for this next year. So I'm gonna show you some of the suspension because a little bit of that technology is what I wanna put into Dig Dug. This thing's got all the skins off of it right now so you can see what's going on, which makes it super cool. It's got a big trailing arm back here and there's a triangulated upper setup. Mine's gonna be a little bit different. Mine will be triangulated the other way on the top. But down here, you can see the trailing arm's different than a regular link because these shocks are mounting in the middle of it. Mine will be a little bit closer to the axle because I don't need this kind of wheel travel, but it'll be a similar design. These things are set up with the coolest independent front suspension. And this isn't something that's going into Dig Dug, but I love it. I think it's awesome. And maybe we'll build something like this someday. They've also got portal axles on the front here. This is gonna be a beast. I think the King of the Hammers is the coolest off-road race ever. If you're not familiar with it, it's a combination of crazy high-speed desert racing and super hardcore rock crawling. All of that built into one off-road vehicle. I'm back in my shop now. It was really fun checking out all of the amazing technology that goes into the Ultra 4 cars. But now it's time to get back to this. I wanna finish chopping out all these rivets and brackets so that I can mock up my own suspension using what I just learned. I think it's time to get out the torch. Everything that I'm taking off the frame is gone now. This piece down here, I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then I'll just weld it in because it reinforces a cross member. But I've got a great platform now to build off of, so I can bring this down now and get the axle under here and start figuring out how that link's gonna fit in. I really like running the torch instead of the plasma cutter to remove rivets. You can just heat up the head of the rivet and then it cuts out nice and clean without gouging into the frame as much. It also uses fire and that's cool. Everything's out of the way so I can get this axle under there now. I'm gonna roll it under and we'll start trying to figure out the links. and try to get the frame or the top of this rail actually to sit at the same height that it was before and we'll see how these tires look under here. Oh, we're almost there. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. 50 and three quarter, that's super close right there. Oh wow, look how these huge tires fill this wheel well. You can see the arch right here is just really small with a 40 inch tire. We'll open all that up so they will fit and be able to have plenty of room to move up and down in here. All right, if I open that up, I could get eight inches of up travel with these tires before they bump into the wheel well. That should be enough. To open up this wheel well, this whole thing is gonna have to get cut out and we'll have to build new ones that are way bigger. This is what I wanna use for my lower links. It's a lot like what I use for the rock sliders except that's quarter inch wall instead of three sixteenths. 
I'm gonna use this rectangular tube for my lower links because it should be really strong like an I-beam in this direction, and it should be strong enough in this direction. You don't see forces on the side of these links near as big as you do this way, especially when you have the big shocks and the coilovers coming down into the middle of the control arm somewhere. This thing is gonna be five feet long, maybe four feet long, somewhere in there, and we'll have the links cut into a pocket here, and I think the width will be perfect to accept the end of the shock. Let's tuck these things up underneath and see how they're gonna fit. That's almost perfect right there. Look at that. I gotta pull this end outward a little. That link is fitting right down in there pretty good. The shocks will come in somewhere like right here and it'll kind of look like that Ultra 4 suspension. I've got these square tube inserts that I'm gonna use. They'll fit right in here and I can weld them in place. And then I'm gonna plate the top and bottom of this tubing with steel, so it'll be even more like an I-beam. It'll just have two webs. All these brackets from Barnes are gonna be what attaches the link to the frame and to the axle. I'm gonna go look right now and see where this is gonna fit. All right, I think these brackets are gonna fit right down in here somewhere like this. I'll get them welded in to both the axle side and the frame side, and that'll tell me what the length is gonna be on my control arm. I'm messing with these shocks over here to figure out how they're gonna fit into this space and see how they're gonna tie into that lower trailing arm. So there's gonna be two of them like this, but they're gonna be way bigger. One will be a triple bypass shock and one will be a coilover. And there needs to be some kind of structure up here that they tie into. So I'm trying to figure out if they're gonna go up and down or if they're gonna tilt back. Lots of stuff to figure out over here. Wonder how high they're gonna stick up in here. Woohoo! That's gonna look awesome. All right, I got something I wanna show you guys really quick. Hang on. Check this out. Somebody sent this to me. I have no idea who, but it's awesome. We're gonna get it hanging in the shop right away. So thank you, whoever you are. Back to your regularly scheduled program. There's a lot of stuff to figure out still on this suspension, but it's coming together. Thank you, Kevin and Steven, for showing me what's going on with your Ultra 4 cars, and thank you for watching. You can check out some more videos right over here.